Hey there YouTubers, this is Kevin from The Bat Productions, and today we're going to do a video about one of the cool things that's coming up about that TV show called The House of the Dragon. I mean, if you know anything about what's been going on with my channel lately, I've been doing a lovely little series where I'm recording basically my own version of The House of the Dragon audiobook, and that is the Game of Thrones prequel that is coming out soon from HBO. It's in filming right now, but we should probably see it come out maybe in the next two years. And this is really going to build upon the world of A Song of Ice and Fire that we all know about at this point via the TV show of Game of Thrones, but also some other stories like Dunkin' Egg, and also, of course, the base A Song of Ice and Fire books. But before we do that, heads up, this video is all about the group of the Dragon Keepers, why they were formed, how they were formed, more specific details about them, and some events that they had a hand in. So, just a heads up, spoilers from Fire and Blood, and also A Song of Ice and Fire. The Dragon Keepers, as you probably could have guessed, this is a group of people who have been hired, have been formed specifically so that they could take care of the dragons that are located in the Dragon's Pit of King's Landing and also, of course, located on Dragonstone. This is their sole responsibility. It is for them to watch over these dragons. I know you're thinking to yourself, why would dragons need any kind of watching over? They're dragons. And not only are they responsible for the adult dragons, but also they have a responsibility and a duty to take care of the individual dragon eggs that have not hatched yet. Obviously, when you have a dynasty that is built on dragons, it's important to keep your most valuable asset locked down with a very dedicated group, a la a Kingsguard, for the king. The Dragon Keepers were first formed in 56 AC or after conquest by Jaehaerys I Targaryen after he experienced the unfortunate circumstance of Arya Targaryen stealing the famed dragon Beleriand the Dread and flying it to Valyria. That's like losing a nuclear missile out in the world. Not a good thing. So you can understand why Jaehaerys I said, all right, enough. Or maybe it was seeing dear Arya Targaryen returning from Valyria dying the worst way that they had ever seen. Not only Jaehaerys, but also his Septon has ever seen. And perhaps that moved his heart to the point where he said this no longer can be accepted. So thus, the Order of the Dragon Keepers was formed under Jaehaerys I Targaryen. And this order has very specific numbers as far as its membership goes. Kind of like a Kingsguard, how they can only have a max of seven people. This has a much higher and different number, which is 77 members at one time. And I would think it's necessary to have a number of people that high because not only do they have the unfortunate incidents working with dragons, but also they have to take care of the dragon pit located near King's Landing, and they also have to be on Dragonstone, and they watch over the dragons and eggs day and night. It is a 24-7 kind of job, so they need a lot of people that they can shift out. Now, it's actually not written in any of the sources as to one or more of the members of the Dragon Keepers by name. However, if I know Jaehaerys I, as I think I do, I would have to imagine that it is mostly comprised of people who had vied for the role of Kingsguard when he initially ascended into the throne, but unfortunately did not get it, or also these other characters that have Valyrian blood in them in the hopes that the dragons would be able to form a better bond or relationship with the Dragon Keepers since they're gonna be there 24 seven, and it only really makes sense. On top of being able to hang out with dragons all the time, the guard actually got to wear a special kind of armor. I would really kind of call it a uniform for this particular job. The armor was said to be a gleaming black armor, and the helms were crested with a row of dragon scales that crested down their backs. I think it sounds like the coolest armor in the entire story, to be quite frank, and I am really excited about the prospect of seeing it in the future of the House of the Dragon because that's probably the only place we're gonna see it in live action. But the good news is, for book readers, you may not have noticed this, but we have actually seen it in the books already in A Song of Ice and Fire, particularly in the first book, of A Game of Thrones in Eddard chapter four. Ned Stark, while walking through the hallways of the Red Keep with Littlefinger, actually walks by what he considers to be a Targaryen relic, which is a beautiful full set of black armor that seem to have scales of some type that really kind of matches the description that I had just given you before from Fire and Blood. So that's pretty cool. The Dragon Keepers have been really helpful in the history of Westeros, though, through their efforts, such as when Sarah Targaryen was caught trying to steal a dragon, or another time when a mob led by a man known as the Shepherd stormed the dragon pit and was taken down by 50 members of the Dragon Keepers. I mean, that's an instance where they had one job and they did it. And it is known that 
Other than the dragon riders themselves, they were known more intimately with the dragons than anyone else. They know more about what the dragons needed and how they felt and bonded with them pretty much more than anyone. I mean, that's what happens when you're with these magic creatures 24-7. As I had said before, we don't know the names of any of these dragon keepers, unfortunately. We may find out a little bit more about them as House of the Dragon unfolds, and we can learn about these dragon babysitters and their shimmering black armor. And I would totally volunteer to be a dragon keeper, by the way. How fun would it be hanging around dragons? I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a big hazard in dragons being involved in my life, but I think that as long as uh, I feed them every day, they'll basically love me just like my dog does, because they know I provide them food. I'm not really surprised I've come to this conclusion. After all, when I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh all the time, I always ran a Kaiba deck, so I think liking dragons just kind of comes naturally to me. I don't think that the Dragon Keepers are really mentioned too much in the books because I don't know if George R. R. Martin really thought that much about them until Fire and Blood. So I'm going to give him a little bit of a pass on that when we try to figure out more information about this group. But that's it. Don't you think this is really cool? The Dragon Keepers. Don't you want to learn more about these people? George, we're begging you. Let us know more. And let me know if you want to know more about Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon or Song of Ice and Fire or even Marvel Entertainment, any of those things. Let me know down below in the comment section so that we can talk more about it. Also, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and so you can see all the videos in the future that I'll be posting about these beautiful series. And of course, make sure that you hit the like button as well because it helps me greatly in growing this channel. Otherwise, hope you have an amazing day, everybody. You take care. Goodbye.